All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, it's a frosty winter's morning here, and I've just had a phone call from a trader friend of mine, which can only mean one thing. I'm going to spend the next two or three hours regretting taking that call. Probably. I've just bought a 2013 Vauxhall Antara 4x4 for £1,750. Now, the Antara is exactly the same as the Chevrolet Captiva. Aren't I just full of interesting facts? I should say right away that I'm not a huge fan of these, but they always seem to sell quite well. So, being that I'm a used car dealer and all, I said yes. I haven't actually seen this yet, but I know a few things about it. It's a 2013, it's the four-wheel drive model, which is quite rare. Most of them are just two-wheel drive. It's done 88,000 miles, and it's got a good service history. But, my mates warned me, it is very, very, very dirty. He said, get it valeted, and then when you pick it up from there, get it valeted again. That's how bad it is. So I thought, well, why not bring you guys along? I'm not really sure what this Antara is worth, but like I say, they always seem to sell well. And we're in winter, so it's the perfect time for one of these. I'm just hoping, as always, that it's all right. I'm hoping that the prep doesn't kill it. If I can spend five, six, or maybe 700 pounds on it, then I should be onto a winner. Anyway, we're not far away now, so let's go and see how dirty, very dirty is. I'll see you there. Well, we're here, and I'm quite pleased with that, actually. It is a bit dirty. It is a bit dirty, like it's lived on a farm or something, which might mean that it's a bit, a bit loose where it's been going over dirt tracks and stuff. We'll see. Good colour. That's actually a facelift model. I can't remember now. I should know this is a sort of nerdy fact, should know, but I can't remember. But that I think is a facelift model. Yeah, there's bits of mud on the front, bits of mud splatter at the side. But if that's very dirty, then I think we're onto a winner. It's got its original Rydale garage plate. It's come from Yorkshire. Is that a dash cam? Captain Sensible. Right, as always then, let's do a quick vehicle history check using Car Vertical. It's really easy to use this. All you do is go to carvertical.com, type in the reg or the VIN. So in this case, we know the reg, and that is Yankee X-Ray 13 Hotel Whiskey Mike. Check vehicle. And this is currently checking hundreds of millions of cars across dozens of countries' databases. It'll tell us whether it's ever been stolen, written off, had a mileage drawback, or has outstanding finance on it. Now, it's really important that you do one of these before you hand over any cash for a used car or motorbike. I know people always say, oh, why do you always check the cars after? Well, most of the time, I buy these from a trusted source, from a, a trader or a main dealer or something. So if it finds something, I can just go back to them and say, listen, you didn't tell me that it's got outstanding finance on it or it you know, had an accident and I can get some money back. But they are sort of unusual circumstances. So it is really important that you check this before you hand over any cash. If you want to save yourself 10% on each and every check that you do, then use my promo code HIGHPEAK, or alternatively, click the link below in the video description. Right, and the report's ready, so it's never been stolen, the odometer's fine, it's never been clocked, there's no outstanding finance, and there's no recorded damage. That's perfect. Well, I know it's done 88,000 miles, at its last MOT it had done 82,000, and it's fairly consistent every single year. The average market value for this is £7,400. I think that's a bit optimistic, to be honest. I was thinking this is probably a, a five grand car, but we'll see. It is a 2.2 litre diesel, 164 horsepower, diesel, manual, all-wheel drive, right-hand drive, four-cylinder. Also tells us some spec there as well. Now, if we go to the most recent MOT, it failed its MOT in March 21, then passed, and failed again in, uh, it failed again this year in March 23. Offside front position lamp not working. Offside front windscreen wiper does not effectively clear the windscreen. Not serious, is it really? And then it passed with no advisor items. I think we could be onto a winner here. Right, let's go and have a look around it. It's a nice day for it today, at least. Now, the first bit of bad news is that we've only got the one key. So, I think if the rest of the car's all right, I'll get another one cut. Uh, straight away, what can I tell you? Well, the garden has been, for a start. That's a result. It is the four-wheel drive CDTI. We've got matching plates because that's its matching Rydale garage plate. I can see a decent tyre. This is a Pirelli Scorpion. That's a good sign. Someone's put proper tyres on it. There is mud splatter everywhere though, but nothing that can't be cleaned. And it's quite clean down. The panel's quite straight, really. There are no dents or dings. That's all quite good. Have we got a matching? Oh, we do. Matching Pirelli Scorpion. Look at that. Brake discs look a little bit lipped, but they might be okay. So we've got two Pirellis. Up front, the headlamps don't need buffing, that's fine. The plates I could replace, but it might be a waste of money, really. 
We've got front parking sensors and I can see a half leather interior. So I imagine that driver's seat bolster's split or ripped because they often do. We've got a, another Pirelli, look at this. Three out of four. We can't have a set of Pirellis on this, surely not. Yeah, it's all quite good really. I do like that colour. A little bit of, oh no it's not, I thought that was lacquer peel. It's just dirt. We've got a stick here from some garage, DJ Motors. So it's had a service at some point, but I was told it had good history this, so got every confidence. It's a big fly, wasn't it? Down this side, the panel gaps look okay. It's quite straight. Doesn't look like it's ever had any paint. <gasps> We've got four Pirellis. Normally when I wander around the cars in this car park, it's a, a Wang Ding or a Land Sale or a Happy Gallop or a Happy Clapper. But on this occasion, we've got four matching Pirellis and that never ever happens. It is very dirty though. He was right about that. We've got twin electrics, which means it's probably been towing a caravan. Still, they can do that. They're quite a good tow vehicle, these, the old 2.2. I like the roof bars. Moving inside then. Uh, where do I begin? I was right about the bolster. The old leatherette's peeling. It is a little bit there as well, but that's not too bad. Hmm. Do I get that done or not? Hmm. This is exactly as described. It is filthy. I don't even want to get in this. We've got a mixture of dog hairs. I mean, what's that, for example? Why is somebody thrashing around a 320 diesel? Does anyone know? There's no need to drive like that. This is disgusting. Disgusting. Someone's left my lights on there. Oh dear, it gets worse. What's this? He was right, wasn't he? It's foul. Got a nice little quick fit wristband there. Snazzy. This is going to need... This might be a seats out job, you know. Get them to unbolt the seats and just clean everything properly. There's my parcel shelf. The back is probably worse than the front. They've had children, I think. Or a guinea pig living here, I'm not sure. Lots of straw and hay everywhere. It smells a bit farmy, if that makes any sense. A bit horsey. Oh, look at this. Mint in, would you like a mint imperial? Jelly snakes. Gross. Gross. I'm often criticising these videos. Oh, it's alright for you, mate. You don't have any kids. You don't know what it's like. Well, you're right, I don't have any kids, but I'd like to think I'd still keep my car a bit cleaner than this. Well, this is actually the cleanest part of the whole car. It's shocking, isn't it? No spare, but we do have more hay, so, you know, swings and roundabouts. This is filthy. Look at that look. Regal, isn't it? What have we got here then? We've got some... <laughs> We've got some anti-chafing cream. Are you chafing, dear? Ah, oh dear. Credit card multi-tool. Might keep that, actually. Andorra stacking chair. These have been campy type people, haven't they? Outdoorsy folk. I don't even know what this is. Like a giant licorice suite. Like a Catherine wheel. Got some service history here, which hasn't been kept in the nicest of order, has it, really? I'll just move this around before I reveal anyone's name or address. Uh, carry out MOT, carry out major service. That was March 19. New brake pads as well. Looks good. Well, I suppose even though this is in no order at all, at least it does have history. Another service here in 21. Full service and replate, uh, replace number plate, number plate lights. Can't speak today. What else have we got? Brake fluid. No one does that. This has actually been looked after. I mean, not, not in terms of hygiene, it's gross. 
in terms of its mechanicals, that's all pretty good. So there is some history there. I wonder where the service book is. This has just been a kiddie abused thing, hasn't it? At least the headlining's clear, not clean. The valeters are going to hate me for this. Hate me. We've got a pen, we've got some McDonald's barbecue sauce. We've got, oh, I might keep that. Got an auxiliary lead. So they do have a brush. I wonder what happened to the dustpan. Oh, a National Trust receipt. Tell you what. This is gross. This really is disgusting. We do have the original mats though, so, you know, it's not all bad, is it? This is vile. Absolutely vile. And it stinks. An eclair wrapper there. Very good. Lock and wheel nut, service book, owner's manual, that's all good. Kirby Moorside, it's a nice part of the world. So it is a manual in placid, I thought it said flaccid, <laughs> flaccid grey with a wicker interior. Very good, I have to remember that for my advert. So we've got some early history there. That's all quite good. Vauxhall, Vauxhall, Vauxhall. Then it went elsewhere, 46, 65. Someone stamped the book there in the wrong place. That should be there. So we've got full history to 65 and we've done 88. So I think if I give it a full service and bring it up to date, it should be good enough, really. Have a look under the bonnet. Hmm, it's a weird OBD slot, isn't it? Who keeps the car like this? We've got cobwebs and everything. Disgusting. Ah, oh, got gas struts that work. Well, more of the same here, ladies and gents. Filthy again. Filthy. I suppose if I were to put a car dealer's spin on it, it's nice and honest, isn't it? Nice and original. But yeah, once a very thorough clean, isn't it? What's the oil like? Black and gloopy, or, yeah. It is a diesel, though, in fairness. Right, so it's crying out for a full service and a full valet. Can't give this to my mechanic looking like this, can I? I don't think there's a cam belt to do, because I think these were a train-driven train engine, so... It's one positive, I suppose. Let's fire her up then, shall we? Oh, I don't even want to be in this. Wearing new jeans as well. We need a bath afterwards. Right, so it's done 88,483. Capital FM, low fuel. Engine light on, does that turn out when I start it? Why is it beeping at me? Foot on the clutch, the clutch feels nice. That's not a good sign, is it? I wonder if it's an immobiliser thing. Slow it down, lock it, unlock it. Foot on the clutch, take it out of gear. I wonder if it's low on diesel. I mean, it is telling me it's low on diesel, but. Well, this isn't good, is it? This isn't good at all. Wait for the glow plug again. Come on, fire up. I'm stamping on the accelerator trying to draw some fuel through and it's... <sighs> right, well, I seem to have bought a bit of a, uh, bit of a lemon here. Not sure what that does. Don't think that's the reason it's not starting though. Ah oh dear, right, what shall we do? Shall we go get some diesel and try and get it going? Right, well I've just put a gallon of diesel in it and it fired right up, so I'm guessing it was very low. Which isn't a good sign, is it? You should never run a, uh, a diesel out of fuel like that. Should we drive it then, carefully, so that we don't break down? Right, well given the fact it's so dirty and the fact it wouldn't start because of low fuel, 
my expectations are quite low with this. Saying that, straight away the clutch feels all right. It isn't too heavy. Usually on these, they're right down on the floor. And they're quite an expensive job. You're looking at around a thousand pounds to replace. My steering feels okay. It isn't notchy, it's quite smooth. Quite smooth there over the bumps. It isn't knocking. I was expecting this, given the fact that I think it's lived on a farm. I thought it might be quite loose and vague on the front end. It seems all right so far. And it's pulling nicely, the old diesel. Gear changes are all right. Gearbox feels quite, quite precise. My fan works, I don't want to put it any higher because it'll just blow more rubbish at me. Put my heated seat on, it's quite a cold day today. Windows, bit of resistance there, but I think that's just grime holding them up. Yep, that one works as well. Radio's fine, parking sensors work. Is there a CD here? No. It's all right, really. I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to stay upbeat. As you'll have seen on this channel, I don't like to be defeated. So if I can ever get out of this junction, we'll take it for a quick spin. And then I think a clean, an emergency clean, because it's horrible and I don't like even being sat in it. The Ford version of a Mazda Bongo. Never seen one of those before. Terrible driving that. Just edging myself out, just force myself into traffic. Well, it pulls all right, you know. Pulls well, actually, it's quite strong. My seat works. Backside's on fire now. Well, hmm, this actually drives far better than it looks. I'm gonna go and stick some more fuel in it because it's obviously very low and I only put a gallon in, so four and a half liters or something. It won't last very long in something like this. Then I'm going to take it for a clean, then my mechanics, and see how bad it is. And then I should have a bit of an update for you. It's quite a good spec though, this. Hmm. Do I bother getting the seat repaired or not? Do I do it or do I not? Oh yes, some snazzy sunglasses here. I daren't put those on. They are TOG24. It's a brand I've never heard of. Lovely stuff. Go on then, I'll let you go. Even though you're in a BMW X1 and you've got a three stripes on the front grille. My heater works. Right, well I think I've gone about as far as I can right now. Let me crack on with the work and I'll have an update for you soon. I'm gonna have to wash my clothes very thoroughly after this, aren't I? Either that'll set fire to them. Well, we're back in a nice and clean Vauxhall Antara. Who'd have thought it? I can't quite believe how well this is cleaned up. This has got to be one of the dirtiest cars I've ever bought. I don't think it had a proper clean in at least five years. So let me tell you what happened then. After we last spoke, I took this to my local car wash. I dropped it off there and then ran off quickly before they could shout at me. I asked them to do a full deep clean on it. And to be honest, I knew that it had come up better, but I didn't quite expect it to be as good as this. Two days later, I sheepishly went to collect it, and the owner of the car wash, as he threw me the key, just raised his eyebrows and shook his head as I drove off into the sunset. But I can safely say that's the best £70 I've ever spent. From there, I took it straight to my mechanics for a full engine service and a clean MOT. Based on the condition of it, I was expecting it to need three or £400 spending to get it through a fresh service and MOT. That was slightly optimistic. It needed, well, a little bit more than that. My bill there was nearly £500. It needed front brake discs and pads along with a couple of other bits. But my mechanic actually commented on what a tidy old thing it was. You'd never know this was the same car, would you? While it was down there, I asked my mechanic to unbolt the driver's seat. And I spoke to my upholstery man, Phil, who came out and picked up the driver's seat and replaced the, the leather or leatherette on the driver's seat bolster. In the end, three panels needed to be replaced, but it looks like new now. It's done a really good job. Then I took it over to Keyfax in Duckerfield for a spare key to be cut. That cost me £100, but this has now got two keys. And I think it's little details like that that really help sell a car. Then I got it back to work and let off one of those odour bombs to get rid of the horsey smell. They're from a company called Airvidox and they're available on Amazon for £20. They're really good, actually. I should speak to them really about a sponsorship deal, shouldn't I? Because I use them all the time. Anyway, I think that's about it. I photographed it and made an advert, and I've got it up for sale for £3,995, which I think should still leave me with a decent profit margin. How decent? We'll soon find out. What I'm going to do now is park up somewhere scenic and sort you through my costs. Here we'll do that, it's as good a place as any.
why bother with a complicated electronic handbrake when you can just have a, a lever? Anyway, right, I paid £1,750 for the car. The bill at my mechanics for oil filter, oil, air filter, fuel filter, cabin filter, front brake discs, front brake pads, labour, an MOT test fee. That was £495.48. Phil, the upholstery man, charged me £145, which I think was money well spent. The valet was £70. The spare key was £100. The Airvidox odour bomb was £20. What else? I think that's it. I haven't replaced the reg plates because they're original and they look okay. I think that's it. So my total spend was, or is, £2,580.48. So if I can get my 3995 for it, it'll leave me with a profit of £1,420. Which is quite good going, isn't it, really, for a two and a half grand outlay? And in addition to that healthy chunk of profit, I've also got a free pair of sunglasses. Look at this. Very snazzy. Right, well on that note, thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. I'll leave the link below. And yeah, cheers guys. See you next time. <laughs>